Hey everyone, my name is Johnny and I'm a drummer from Toronto, Canada and I just wanted to do a bit of an update video on where I'm at in my quest to learn about NFTs. And over the last month and a half um, since I first started, I've been jumping around from project to project and website to website in different markets and things like that and I just wanted to give you my thoughts on each one and to be honest, I really wanted to hear what your thoughts were on each one as well just to know where I'm kind of at and uh, what everyone's outlook is for NFTs in general. So I hope you enjoy and here we go. So when I first got into NFTs, I got into CryptoKitties and I actually mentioned this in a previous video. I'll link it at the end. And CryptoKitties was really cool. I was really excited about it. Um, the whole concept was fascinating that you could get these crypto kitties that are backed on the Ethereum blockchain and they're unique and you can breed them and get different attributes and different mutations that can be um, potentially worth a lot of money and especially the generation zero crypto kitties which are worth a lot of money. So I couldn't afford any of those, but I ended up collecting uh, Generation 1 and Generation 2 Crypto Kitties, and I ended up breeding um, two of the kitties together, which cost a lot of money and gas fees, but I just wanted to try it out. And it was funny because I bred these two kitties and the offspring looked identical to one of the crypto kitties, one of the parents. So it was kind of a bit of a letdown because I spent this money, which was like maybe... I don't know, I'd like to say like 80 or 90 um, equivalent uh, dollars at the time, which was a lot of money. And then I got this crypto kitty that looked exactly the same. So I was a little bummed out about that. So I had three crypto kitties and then I bought a fourth one on OpenSea. Since then, I lost a bit of interest in the crypto kitty world just because I didn't see a lot of people flipping or moving them, which isn't necessarily why I got into them. But, you know, I just figured I got my fix and I'm just going to leave them in my uh, MetaMask and just move on. To to the next thing so I have four crypto kitties right now and that was really fun I do check every now and then but I feel like crypto kitties no one's really mentioning it right now which might be a good thing and I still have hope that you know because crypto kitties were one of the first collectibles in the nft world along with crypto punks i feel like they might be worth something in the future and at the end of the day i had fun just collecting them so um that's my take on crypto kitties what do you all think about crypto kitties do you think there will be a future with uh, owning some of them i'm just curious to know your thoughts if you're a crypto kitty expert or enthusiast so please let me know below i also mentioned in a previous video that i was browsing around a lot on rarible and on OpenSea, especially OpenSea and uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was really cool I ended up buying a piece of artwork on OpenSea and I ended up selling a piece of artwork which I mentioned in a past video which I'll link below as well and um, it was a lot of fun but I really really found that on OpenSea and Rarible there's just so many NFT projects it seems like everyone's got some kind of angle or some kind of collectible or some kind of you know artwork and there's quality and there's low quality and you don't know what's gonna maybe hit and for that reason I feel like nothing is really gonna hit I feel like OpenSea and Rarible um, is just becoming a place for anyone like you really got to sift through to find some kind of magic there or you got to have a big budget and kind of go with what's trending and flip it that's what it at least seems to me what i really liked about open sea is that the comedian john cleese actually did an auction for a drawing he did of the brooklyn bridge and i forget what he was what he'd put it up for like 60 something thousand and he kind of had this buzz going on and it was really cool because he had his profile on OpenSea so you had his address and I started noticing that a lot of people were gifting him NFTs so that kind of got me thinking I'm like whoa if you have a celebrity's address you could essentially gift them an NFT of whatever you want so I noticed with John Cleese someone gifted him some kind of voice memo and someone gifted him the holy grail so I thought I was like I'm gonna create something and gift it to John Cleese and uh, that's exactly what I did. I ended up doing this um, piece of artwork right here <laughs> and as you can see um, there's a lemur in this picture and I just kind of read up on John Cleese and I found out that he has a passion for lemurs so um, I ended up adding that to this little kind of portrait of him <laughs> which I think is hilarious and I gifted it to him so I thought that was kind of cool so my thinking was just that oh, maybe John Cleese will see this and you know it's now in his possession so if he were to ever sell it in the future um, it would say that it came from John Cleese 
Cleese and maybe that would give it some value. That was my thinking anyways, but at the end of the day, I just love John Cleese. I think he's hilarious. So I just thought it was really cool that I had the ability to give him something and put it in his possession in his wallet so that was really cool but yeah rareable and open sea i've kind of lost a bit of interest to be honest just because there's way too many projects and i just don't have my finger to the pulse i don't know what's trending um well you see what's trending but i don't know what's actually making money out there or what's actually valuable more importantly so I kind of lost a bit of interest there, but I do check every now and then and I have fun just browsing around. I want to know what your thoughts are. If you're still on OpenSea or Rarible, if you're an artist, you know, have you been selling? Let me know what you're thinking. From there, I ended up getting into NBA Top Shot and that was my most recent video. I bought my first pack and I opened it up. And what was cool is that the pack was 14 bucks US and I opened it up and I ended up getting this moment of Bogdan Bogdanovich and I ended up reselling it for $54 right away. So that was kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that. And um, so yeah, I made a bit of profit there, but it wasn't about the profit. I was just trying to get an understanding of the NBA Top Shot marketplace. So I found it fascinating because on Top Shot, you can actually look at every moment that exists and you can see what the past sell history and buy history is for every moment. And it's interesting because things like the lower the serial number, the more it'll go for and things like certain moments that might be part of a challenge that NBA Top Shot is having will end up going up in value and then they'll quickly drop off as soon as the challenge is done. So it's kind of like its own market and it was really blowing my mind to see all of this happening and see all of the sales that are happening in the marketplace constantly. And going down the YouTube rabbit hole, I ended up finding out about this site called LiveToken.co and you can actually see all of the sales that are happening on NBA Top Shot in real time. And it actually ranks if the sale is a good deal or not. And what I realized there is that there are people just waiting to hit buy. It doesn't even matter. And it ends up becoming this kind of lottery where you're just hitting buy on every play, hoping that you're going to get in front of this line to buy this moment. So it seems very competitive. I know that opening packs and getting moments and then selling them and then trying to sell moments that are desirable due to various things that Top Shot is pushing, that all kind of comes into play. So it's really interesting and I've been kind of the most into Top Shot right now, but it is a bit of an expensive collecting kind of frontier right now. And I don't know if I want to spend too, too much money there, but I do want to buy another pack when I can. If you're into Top Shot, please let me know what your thoughts are. You know, I'm trying to buy moments that are either rookie moments or a player's first minted moment on NBA Top Shot. So it's been a lot of fun. NBA Top Shot seems really cool. And I, I know they're trying to expand it into other realms. I know UFC is going to be dropping some NFT soon. If you go to their website, just type in UFC NFT and you can actually sign up with your email and they'll notify you when their first round of NFT drops are coming. Once again, I'm not a huge, huge UFC guy but I think it's cool to be first in a new realm and yeah, I'm curious to know how they're going to kind of angle it. You know, if it's going to be exactly like NBA Top Shot, like moments, kicks, punches, knockouts, or if they're going to tailor it a little bit differently. I'm not sure. So I'm really looking forward to that. Let me know your thoughts below if you have any insight to the UFC NFTs that are coming. And finally, something that I'm really excited about, and I know it's going to be irrelevant in a couple of weeks, which is why I'm leaving it till the end of the video, is uh, the Gary V NFT project that he's been hyping up big time right now. I don't know if you follow him on social media, but Gary V has really been pumping May 5th. He's going to be releasing this big project. And all we kind of know through clues is that it's an NFT project and it's going to be life changing and it's going to be a culmination of his whole life work and it's going to be something that he works towards for the rest of his life. These are kind of big claims, but if you know Gary Vee, you know that he is all about creating value to his viewers and listeners. So it seems pretty promising. It seems really exciting. I really don't think he'd be trying to pull a fast one on any of his followers. They mean too much to him. I guess there's a lot of speculation on what this project, this secret project is. <laughs> and if I were to speculate, we know it's kind of public knowledge that he's been doing a lot of doodles recently that he's going to be turning into NFTs. And we know he's got characters kind of like this. 
these animals that are a bit of an alliteration on words and just you know sympathy swan or whatever i don't remember all the names but uh, I'll sh i'm showing you some examples right here anyways i think he's gonna kind of turn those into nfts and i feel like it's not gonna be just you buy this nft of this doodle and that's it i honestly think he's gonna have a lot of back-end stuff associated with each nft that you buy something maybe like being part of a gary v family maybe or being a part of a gary v kind of inner circle where you can have access to maybe other people who own some of his nfts and you can build this kind of community i know he's all about community so i feel like it might be something kind of like that also he always talks about nfts and art being you the purchaser investing more in the artist as opposed to the art well obviously the art but you're really investing in the person and gary v has always shared what his goals are you know he wants to own the jets for example so you're kind of buying a gary v nft and you're supporting him as a person and all that he wants to accomplish in life, thus making the NFT that you buy more valuable in the long term. And he's all about the long game. So I don't think these NFTs are going to be a quick flip. And if they are, there might be a bit of a bubble there, but I think he wants people to hold on to them for a long time and grow as he grows. So it's really interesting. I'm really excited in all of his recent videos on this project. He's really going out of his way to teach people how to set up a meta map wallet so I think just step one he's trying to get everyone to go on and be ready to buy with a MetaMask wallet and it's pretty crazy because he's straight up like saying to people get a MetaMask wallet and put one ether in there one ethereum coin in there which is crazy because it's worth so much right now you know that's not cheap it's interesting that he's saying that and he's also reminding people get as much ethereum in there as possible so it's really interesting and it's not like him to really do this big call to action monetarily so i'm really intrigued to see what happens to be honest i'm really going to try and get one ether in my metamask account i have some bitcoin i think i'm going to convert it when the price is kind of right i'm going to convert it to ethereum and get it on metamask and just kind of see and make a call on may 5th whether i want to buy whatever it is gary v is selling but i do want to be prepared and get the money in there i'm curious to know your thoughts on what you think the gary v drop is going to be on may 5th maybe this will just be something cool to look back on after so i hope you enjoy i hope you got something out of this video please please comment below because the whole point of this video is to create a dialogue below i just want to learn as much as possible to be honest and i'm curious to get other people's takes on certain things in the market. Please let me know other sites that you may come across or that you're on right now. And I would seriously love to know what you think the next kind of thing is. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I hope to see you next time. Bye.